When I think of a Pokemon with an awesome concept followed by poor execution, the first Pokemon I think of are the Paris line. At first glance, it seems like nothing more than another weird looking bug, but as I'm sure many of you know, this line is based on the Tochu Kasu mushroom, also known as the caterpillar fungus, a real world mushroom that latches onto an insect host where it will eventually develop the ability to absorb nutrients from it and even control the host's brain activity and movement, draining the host until it is nothing more than an empty husk. Once the host is completely dead, the fungus will release its spores out of the caterpillar's mouth and thus the cycle begins anew. That is absolutely chilling. And I love that Pokemon, especially Gen 1, aren't afraid of dark ideas like this. I mean, they really didn't pull any punches with Paris and Parasect. As Paris, the bug is exposed to fungal spores right from birth, and the mushroom grows along with the host Pokemon according to the Pokedex. When it evolves into Parasect, the Dex explains that it's actually the mushroom that controls the Pokemon's thoughts and actions, dragging it into damp caverns which are suitable for the mushroom, but not the insect. That is so disturbing and I love it. I can't even fathom being helplessly dragged into an environment I cannot survive in like the bottom of the ocean, step by step. Ultra Sun's entry takes it a step further, explaining that the bug is mostly dead, and if the mushroom were to fall off, the bug would stop moving. The mushrooms on the Pokemon's back are so toxic that they are actually sought after for medicines. This is the reason why the Tiny Mushroom and Big Mushroom are items meant to be sold. I love that Game Freak isn't afraid to give a little bit of dark world building into its children's video game series for those that are interested enough to look deeper. Despite Game Freak's love of Gen 1 pandering, Paris seems to have missed the boat, never getting a Mega Evolution, Regional Form, or even a Gigantamax form like Butterfree. This makes me sad, because all of these things revolve around the Pokemon's design, which again, the Paris line knocks out of the park. I personally would have loved to see what they would have done with something similar to Gigantamax Kingler, like a grim, creepy, and realistic design. I feel like Parasect could have really shown here. Well, today we'll finally be showing the Paris line some love. But, like always, we need to start with what we're up against. Unfortunately, Paris and Parasect's lore is reflective of their battling ability. They're pretty much dead already. I want to start off with our stats. A base total of 405 may sound abysmal, and it is, but it's not quite so bad when you consider that most of its loss in power comes via our lack of speed. Most other stats are respectable, 95 physical attack is, dare I say, mediocre, and many frail Pokemon would love to have 80 in both defenses. Being slow is not the death sentence most people make it out to be. Sure, it's bad, but slow Pokemon like Slowbro, Snorlax, and Magneton are all great Pokemon despite being slow. I look at these stats and I think, not great, but salvageable. What is a death sentence, however, is our typing. Yeah, grass, bug. Two of the worst types in the game with the worst synergies you will ever see. Parasect holds the record for most quad weaknesses with three in Generation 1, Fire, Flying, and Poison, since in Gen 1, Bug and Poison were super effective against each other. But this has been remedied, and one of our quad weaknesses is now only a regular weakness. Does this save Parasect? No. Of course not. The opponent will almost always have a super effective move against you, and since we are so slow, we are getting outsped. Maybe not one shot, but probably close. Flying types are everywhere in Kanto, as are poison types and bug types. Fire and rock are pretty prominent as well, and you still have to face ice in the Elite Four. These two factors combined absolutely cripple this Pokemon line. This is why the amazing signature move, Spore, is not enough to save it in my opinion. You probably won't get to put the Pokemon to sleep because, again, we're moving second and our terrible typing means we're probably dead already. Butterfree is available earlier and fills the sleep niche better. It's way faster, and with compound eyes, sleep powder is 97.5% accurate, 
so it's basically Spore. And, for the niche of catching Pokemon and completing the decks, Compound Eyes boosts the held item chance of wild Pokemon, which is very convenient. So more bad news for Parasect, we're not even the best bug type sleeper. But we're still not done yet, because I said that I would be playing through Gen 3 today, a realm that cripples both our types even further. In the first three generations, Bug is the worst type. There's no way around it. This was before Game Freak realized that Bug types could be more than just early game filler Pokemon that fall off after the third gym. So we see a lot of horribly weak Pokemon in the first three generations like Beedrill, Ariados, and of course, Ledian. But again, I mentioned before that our stats were okay. We do have a solid physical attack, and Bug is a physical type. So what moves are we going to hit our opponents with? Maybe Leech Life? It's 70 base power, right? I've played Gen 7 before. No, it's 20 base power. This is the only bug type move Paris and Parasect learn in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Even by TM, even by breeding, even via the move tutor. And it's not like there are really better options out there. Take a look at all bug type moves available in this gen. Now you may be looking for the bread and butter bug type beatdown moves like X Scissor, Bug Buzz, or even Bug Bite. None of them exist yet. Mega Horn is here. Does Parasect have a horn? No, it doesn't. I will not be giving us Mega Horn. Well, okay, what about our grass typing? There may not be a region more welcoming for grass types than Kanto. Grass has a favorable matchup against the first three gyms. Well, that's true, and while we do get some decent grass type moves like the 60 base power, 5 PP Giga Drain, our special attack is only 60. We're not making much use out of this type offensively. Grass's main use on Parasect is to make us resistant to water and electric. Let me say that again. The main draw of our dual grass typing is for defense. The type with the most weaknesses in the game. I think I've made it pretty clear that our bug grass typing is going to be our biggest hurdle. And while I don't ever want to change a Pokemon's type without good reason, I actually think we have one here. Mushrooms aren't grass. There is no reason this Pokemon should be a grass type. Plants and fungi are completely different kingdoms in the classification of living things. You and I as human beings have more in common with fungi genetically than plants do. Now yes, the two kingdoms often work in symbiosis with one another in a process called mycorrhizae, but I don't think that's enough reason to loop them together. I don't think Game Freak did their research here, and it cost poor Parasect his viability. Shame on you, Game Freak. Shame. So, okay, what are we going to replace the grass typing with? Well, my first thought was poison, which, while appropriate, I think we can do better. Bug Poison is just a bit... basic. Bug Psychic is interesting. Psychedelic Mushrooms are a thing, and the Mushroom on Parasect's back is noted to control its thoughts. But I'm going to make this Pokemon Bug Ghost Type, which I think is really exciting and the perfect dual typing for the so-called Zombie Mushroom. Of course, the reason being that, upon evolving, the host bug is an empty husk devoid of all life, canonically dead. Now I'm going to show some restraint here, and only apply this new type after we evolve into Parasect, as in our first form, the host is still alive and well. I actually think this creates an interesting choice for the player as well. Paris evolves at level 24, the second gym leader, Misty's level cap is 21. Now I could pull down our evolution level, but it may be advantageous to leave it as is, because at level 21, we would still resist the water type, despite having weaker stats. Now the next gym leader is Lieutenant Surge, who has a level cap of 24, so we can evolve beforehand if we so choose, but again, it may be advantageous not to evolve for the same reason. I have no idea how I'll choose to go about this in the run, but creating as many choices for the player as possible is a good thing in my book. 
Another reason I'm in love with this type combo is that it would make Parasect one of the few Pokemon who is just as viable without the physical special split. As the ghost type is infamously a physical type in Gen 3, just like Bug, making use of our decent physical attack stat. There's only one ghost type line in Kanto, and they really don't like to use ghost type moves because they're special attackers. In other words, this would make Parasect the only Pokemon in the game to make good offensive use out of stab ghost typing. That is a niche if I've ever heard one, and I'm really interested how we can shake up the Kanto region. The new dual typing would make Parasect a great counter to the infamous psychic types that run amok in Kanto, also making us viable in the late game against Elite Four Bruno and possibly Agatha as well. We've only ever seen one bug ghost type before, and it's Sheninja who only has one HP. So it might surprise you that this is actually a decent defensive type combo at least compared to what we had before. Of course, now we have two immunities in normal and fighting, and four resistances. Plus, both our quad weaknesses get cut in half. We still do have five weaknesses, but many of them are pretty rare types. There are no dark types in Kanto, so Bite is probably the worst we'll face. Ghost types are also pretty rare as I mentioned before, so I'm excited to see just how bulky Parasect can become. Another thing I love is that it synergizes well with one of our abilities, Dry Skin. Despite no longer resisting water moves from our typing alone, this ability still gives us an immunity to water, which is insanely useful because it's the most common type out there. As a Grass type, this ability was almost going to waste since we resist water anyway, but now we can make better use of- Oh. Oh, Dry Skin is actually a Gen 4 ability? Oh. One of the most significant bummers of my lifetime. Now I could try to hack this ability into Gen 3, but I decided to remain faithful to the game and generation I've chosen to play. Going through an early gen game is kind of like going camping. You know, we're roughing it. Seriously though, this is actually a huge nerf. Effect Spore isn't as useful as it might seem at first. We're almost always going to want to put the opponent to sleep with Spore, but we're slower. So if the opponent makes contact with us first and triggers Effect Spore and, say, poisons itself, then we can't put it to sleep, which doesn't synergize with a lot of moves I want to give it. But whatever, it makes sense so I will keep Effect Spore, but just imagine the potential this Pokemon would have in later generations, okay? But I am going to give us a second ability in Immunity. I know this is a pretty exclusive ability, but I think it makes sense on top of being a great defensive ability. Logically, we can't get poisoned if we're already infected with toxic spores, right? I can't imagine Parasect is conscious enough anymore to realize it's poisoned anyway. So yeah, I think I've justified it enough in my head. Next, let's take a look at our moveset, which leaves a lot to be desired, as many do in the first three generations. Starting off with Scratch at level 1 is fine. Looking at Paris, it looks so pathetic that I don't expect it to do much more than Scratch. But I'm gonna pull Leech Life down from level 19 to level 5. It's a great move for reflecting what Paris and its Mushroom are all about, draining the life energy from others. But it's so weak that there's no reason we should have to wait this long to learn it. I could have added Absorb here, but I don't want to lean too hard into our Grass typing. We can also learn Bullet Seed via TM, which is obtainable in Mount Moon also, so the grass coverage will still be there for us. I also think Poison Powder is fine at level 13. Again, the Mushroom spreads through Toxic Spores, and the power level of 13 is fine. Since we're so weak, we'll need to rely on whittling the opponent down through sinister tactics like this. Next, we're also going to learn Fury Cutter at level 17. I mentioned earlier that there are very few good bug type moves in Gen 3, and Fury Cutter is no exception, but I think we actually might be able to make good use out of it. Since we might be able to survive a good number of turns with our new typing, giving us some immunities. In a similar vein, I strongly considered giving us Leech Seed at level 20, but I'm going to show a lot of restraint here for a couple reasons. One, since I'll be taking away the grass typing upon evolution, I really don't want to lean into it anymore. I'm still not convinced Paris should be Parkgrass either, 
but the ghost type doesn't make sense yet until we, you know, die. So in our first stage, I think it's harmless enough. The second reason is that I'm curious to see how strong we can be without it. We're making some pretty major changes, which are mostly for the better. Leech Seed is kind of a pretty cheap fix that can rectify almost any grass type, so I only want to rely on it when I need to. So instead, I'm going to add a utility move here in False Swipe. Yeah, this isn't really a combat move, and we probably won't see it used in the run, but I mentioned earlier that Butterfree outclasses Parasect as a catching Pokemon. As a result, Butterfree has developed a niche for itself, despite being pretty weak. False Swipe comboed with our signature move Spore is an insane combo for catching Pokemon and an exceptionally rare niche. And it's a slashing move, so it's actually feasible that we'd learn it. Again, I doubt we'll see it in our run, but I wanted to throw it in at a point in the game where the player may still be catching Pokemon to add to their team. This will be our last move until evolving at level 24, upon which I will make it so that we learn Spore here instead of at level 27. Now that we don't resist Surge's electric types, I figure we can at least be of some use in that fight. This is our signature move, the first move you probably think about when you bring up Parasect. We should pretty much be building our learn set around this, and we will. To fill the now empty move slot at level 27, I'm going to give us our first ghost move, Nightshade. There aren't a lot of ghost moves available in this generation, and it seemed like a better filler move than Lick, and more appropriate than Shadow Sneak. I don't think Parasect should be one-shotting opponents. I think our motif is about gradually wearing the opponent down while they're completely helpless to fight back, and I think Nightshade reflects that well enough. Next, at level 30, is a move I'm pretty excited about, Nightmare. Not only is this a ghost move, but it pairs super well with Spore. I feel like Parasect's quote-unquote life is a living nightmare, so this seems pretty appropriate. I've never actually used this move, and I don't think it's going to be good, but this may be the only chance we ever get to actually use it. I'm going to follow up with another ghost move at level 35, and push Slash to level 39 for Shadow Punch. Yeah, you might have expected Shadow Claw here, but this is Gen 3, so it doesn't exist yet. Obviously, if we were playing Gen 4, that would be the move i choose, but instead, I'm settling for the Shadow Claw at home. You might be wondering why I didn't add the stronger move Shadow Ball instead. While we are a ghost type, I don't see us as being very paranormal. This is just nature taking its course. We're literally just dead. Kinda like Annihilate or Blockbuster Video. So I'm going to show some restraint and not get too fancy with the whole afterlife related ghost moves. Shadow Punch seems like a good balance. At level 43, I'm going to get rid of the move Growth. Sure, you could argue the mushroom is said to grow along with the insect in the Pokedex, but I would argue, who cares? This move doesn't really do much for us anymore, since we're no longer a special attacker, and I think we can do better, since growth does not increase physical attack in Gen 3. So I'm going to swap it with Dream Eater, an interesting move that rarely ever gets used, but I'm hoping we can combo it well with Spore. Some might consider this move to be a bit of a stretch, but honestly, I feel like it makes more sense than Giga Drain, especially since we're no longer a grass type. We may not be literally eating dreams in the same way as Drowsy does. More so, we're just draining the life of a Pokemon who is dreaming. I think it makes enough sense, and it should be a fun move. Plus, this is right at Koga's level cap, so I'm hoping it'll be a good answer for him. I know this is a move tutor move anyway, but I like it slightly more in our level up move set since a Pokemon's natural learn set is reflective of their design, whereas a move tutor move and even TM moves can kind of get all over the place. Next, I'm going to replace Giga Drain at level 51 and lean into the fact that we're no longer a grass type. The move I'm bringing in is pretty similar in Pain Split, a move that many ghost types can learn. Let me ask you a question. Who do you think is in more pain? You? Or this atrocity that's slowly getting the life sucked out of it? Yeah, I thought so. Plus, this is a move that kinda takes advantage of us being slow. We kinda like to get hit first and have a lower HP than the opponent, so we heal for more. Lastly, I'm going to replace Aromatherapy as our last move at level 59. Now, Aromatherapy does make sense, as the toxics from our mushrooms are used for medicine, but it's not really a useful move, 
and I don't see Parasect as a cleric, really. I just think Destiny Bond is a cooler ultimate move. I don't think we'll get much use out of this either since we're so slow, but it seemed kind of fun and fitting. The whole, if I go down, you're coming down with me vibe running parallel with the fact that once the host insect dies, the mushroom dies too, and vice versa. So this is mostly a design factor, as most of my late game move choices often are. Now you may look back at this moveset and think that there aren't enough bug type moves, but again, as I previously mentioned, there are very few bug type moves overall in this gen, and Parasect doesn't really fit the bill for any of the strong ones. There's Signal Beam, but I don't think that really fits. I can't really picture us blasting a ball or beam of any kind. There's Mega Horn, but obviously we have no horn. And then there's Silver Wind, but again, we've got no wings either. There's really not much that panders to the type of bug that Parasect is. So I think that what we've given it so far is fine. So there we go, our tweaking is complete. It's time to take the creepiest of crawlies throughout the unsuspecting Kanto region. I'll be catching a few Pokemon besides Parasect here, but since our changes are pretty drastic, I'm curious to see how we fare now, and kinda wanna use them as much as possible. I think it'll be fun to have a ghost type early on for most of the game. As usual, I'll be playing on set mode, and I won't be using held items in battle. Alright, let's get started. So starting off, I decide to pick Bulbasaur as our starter. This means Blue will take Charmander. It may seem like the toughest challenge for Parasect, but he'll have a fire type on his team no matter what. I really just chose Bulby to capitalize on the fact that Parasect isn't a grass type anymore, so no overlap in typing. These two probably don't end up on a team together very often. We may also be kinda weak in the early game, so I want a starter who can kinda crush the early game if need be. I'm just gonna breeze past everything leading up to Mount Moon where we can actually get Paris. If I ever make a video on a Pokemon that isn't available early on, I'll try to make up a way to include them in the early game. But Mount Moon is fine. Maybe I could have changed it to Viridian Forest, but out of all the nitpicks I have with Paris, availability is pretty far down the list. Obviously, we crush Brock with a few Vine Whips, by the way. I didn't even go to a Pokemon Center. Once we get to Mount Moon, we catch our Paris. I name him One Down. Cause like, He's got a mushroom that takes away his life instead of giving him an extra one. You get it. Anyway, I make sure to grab one with our new immunity ability. We're a quirky nature, which is fine. Kind of funny, actually. Oh, Paris, stop dying. You're so quirky. We're still a bug grass type for now, but our days are numbered. And now we have leech life at level 5, which will hopefully make grinding a little bit easier. So right off the bat, I see immediate improvement. Even with Stab, Leech Life is still weaker than Scratch, but sustaining ourselves since we're so weak is great. Plus, we're immune to poison from some of these trainers, and the rocket grunts deeper down. I also taught us the Bullet Seed TM found here, for coverage against all the rock types. We're not quite strong enough yet for this next rival fight though, as we're still quad weak to flying and fire, so I rely on Ivysaur to take out the heavy threats like Pidgeotto and Charmander. This is a good example of why I didn't want to give Leech Seed to Paris. This move can eventually take out pretty much any opponent, even if they are super effective against us. We'll see if I end up regretting that decision later, but for now, I can at least give Paris a little bit of XP taking out the Abra and Rattata to end the fight. Time for our last battle as a living creature. Let's go out with a bang and use our grass type to our advantage while we still have it. We have Fury Cutter now, so I can build power on our Staryu by using it over and over. Staryu can't do much to us since we resist Water Pulse, and we're already bulkier than I thought. Staryu can try to harden all it wants, but Fury Cutter eventually overwhelms it, and her ace Starmie gets wrecked by what is now a 160 base power, super effective stab bug move. Get absolutely shat on, Misty. After that, I decide I should probably add a Diglett to our team. Not really for Surge, but we'll probably need an answer to Blue's Charmeleon for the SSN fight. Fun fact, Diglett and Doug Trio are two of my least favorite Pokemon. I just absolutely hate their frail stat distribution, but hey, we need some type diversity, and I don't think I've ever really used one, so she'll do I guess. Time for our third rival fight. Now I could have evolved Paris for this fight, but I kinda need to stay under Surge's level cap of level 24. I use Ivysaur and get off a Leech Seed on Pidgeotto and put it to sleep before switching into Paris to take it out with Secret Power which I learned via TM. 
This brings out Charmeleon, so I switch into Diglett, who does the job with a nice critical hit of magnitude 6. I let her go down to a quick attack from Raticate though, and Leech Seed him with Ivysaur. We can then take it out with Razor Leaf, and get a good amount of damage on his final Pokemon Kadabra before getting finished off. All good though, as Paris can finish the fight with the Leech Life. I'm hoping Paris will get to be more useful in these rival fights once we evolve. They're proving to be pretty difficult since we picked Bulbasaur. Speaking of, at level 24, the Parasite finally takes over. Sad to see you go Paris, but hopefully this will be a pretty big power spike for us. We also learn our signature move Spore, which of course will be our bread and butter for the rest of the run most likely. Surge time. We definitely don't do as well as we would have here if we were a grass type, but our stack growth is undeniable. Surge's electric attacks don't do much to us, which gets me excited for when we get defensive moves down the road. His Pikachu paralyzes us and starts double teaming, so Fury Cutter isn't really an option, but eventually we do hit through and one-shot him with secret power. His ace Raichu comes out to do the exact same thing, but we get lucky and break through twice in a row to win us the fight. Alright, good work Parasect. On to Erika, and I'm pretty excited for this fight. We're no longer a grass type, so we're not weak to her poison moves anymore, and now resist them instead. Her lead Victor Bell goes for poison powder, which we're now immune to because of, well, immunity. I got rid of Bullet Seed after Rock Tunnel for the Aerial Ace TM, so I used that to take it out. Tangela comes in, and we outspeed it, so I put her to sleep immediately, since grass types aren't immune to powder moves in this game. See, I knew I picked the right gen to play. We start another Fury Cutter train, and there's just nothing her team can do about it. I don't think I've ever seen Fury Cutter on such a tanky Pokemon. This is such a good combo. We even one-shot her Ace Vileplume at max power, so yeah, that pretty much went exactly how we drew it up. After that, I decide to fill up our team a little by catching a Doduo on Route 16. No particular reason, just needed something that can learn fly, and Doduo is my favorite of the Gen 1 birds. Also, I decide to take the Vaporeon from Celadon City, since we're also going to need someone to use Surf. No real planning on this team, I'm just kind of winging it. I want to mostly be using Parasect anyway. Side note that I love how you can just buy Evolution Stones in this game. No idea why they ever took that away. Next up is a fight against Giovanni, and we do okay, I guess. He's got a lot of rock types, so I ditch Nightmare for the Dig TM, which are available in infinite supply at the department store. I'm sad we didn't really use Nightmare, but it kind of slipped my mind that it's reliant on the opponent being asleep the entire time, so it's possible that it only lasts two turns if you're unlucky. It's too bad, because I like trying to make use of niche moves as well as niche Pokemon. Now I could have taught us the Giga Drain TM which we just got from Erika, but that kind of felt like cheating since I did delete it from our level up moveset. I will make a point that Parasect's TM compatibility is pretty underrated. We've had a decent solution for pretty much anything we've needed to hit so far. His Kangaskhan is a decent threat with Bite, but half the time he just goes for Tail Whip anyway which does nothing, and his last Pokemon Rhyhorn seems like it only has normal moves which can't touch us. I don't think I've conveyed it much so far, but the ghost typing has been pretty unreal, since not only are there so many normal types, but in Gen 3, move pools are so shallow that many Pokemon only know normal type moves, so we're having a great time so far. Parasect is a very reliable, safe switch in a tough situation. Next, we've got another rival fight in Lavender Tower. And I feel kinda bad because I'm pretty overleveled here. It's been a while since I played Fire Red, but it looks like I was supposed to do all this stuff before fighting Erika, but I kinda did build my moveset around this. I wanted to give us Shadow Punch in preparation for all the ghost types we're about to fight. But I guess in hindsight, I'd give us Shadow Punch a bit earlier. Eh, live and learn. Regardless, we do learn Shadow Punch in the middle of this fight, and it's nice to have a strong stab move since Fury Cutter is kinda falling off. Two of his Pokemon are Psychic type, so this is gonna come in pretty handy. Good fight, but we'll see if the next rival fight goes just as smoothly when his Charmeleon is fully evolved. Needless to say, we do pretty well in this tower, cleaning up all the ghost types. We are overleveled, but I feel like this would one-shot either way, since the Ghastly line is super frail physically. Next up in Sylphco, we've got another rival fight, and this one doesn't go as well. Since I deleted Aerial Ace for Shadow Punch, We've got no real answer for Pidgeot, so we have to take it out with Vaporeon. I try to switch into Parasect on the Execute, 
but he paralyzes us, which kind of ruins any hope of contribution in this fight. When the Gyarados comes in, I can at least put it to sleep before pivoting into Dodrio, who can pretty much take care of the rest of the fight. If nothing else, putting opponents to sleep is still really useful for switching in frail Pokemon like Dodrio. But I was really hoping we'd see more progress in this fight. I'm starting to worry if our physical attack is starting to fall off. On a higher note, the following Giovanni fight goes way better than the last one. He uses a lot of poison Pokemon, which we now resist and can't get poison from Poison Point either. Shadow Punch and Dig do solid damage against his whole team. His last Pokemon Kangaskhan seemingly can't touch us since we're a ghost type, even though he had Bite last time we fought. Hey, I'm not complaining. We've got a couple gym fights coming up that both have the same level cap of 43, and I'm hoping we can keep the momentum going. I go for Sabrina first. You'd think we do pretty well here being both Bug and Ghost, but since we're so slow, we'll need to take a lot of hits. We do one-shot her Kadabra through Reflect, and I decide to put her Venomoth to sleep and stall the Reflect out. Eventually, we take it down with a few Shadow Punches. Her Mr. Mime sets up Barrier, so we just miss a one-shot while she heals a couple times. We take it out eventually, but have to take Psybeam in the process. I figure we're just about done for when her Ace Alakazam comes out, but it goes for Future Sight, giving us an opportunity to take it out. Honestly, we did about as well as we could have there. Our natural bulk has actually shocked me thus far. It's great not being quad weak to everything. Okay, it is absolutely insane how much we cheese this Koga fight. Off the bat, we not only resist poison, but we cannot get poison because of immunity. And we've got Dream Eater now, which, when combo with Spore, is pretty unstoppable. Since it's super effective, it one-shots both his coughing. But that's not even the end of it, because we also counter all the cheap tricks Koga likes to pull. Self-Destruct doesn't affect us, and we even counter Minimize because Shadow Punch can't miss. There is absolutely nothing Koga can do. All I can say is, I'm sorry my dude, I honestly didn't think we'd counter him this hard. But this is the most satisfied I've ever felt in this series. I know a Psychic type like Alakazam could one-shot his whole team anyway and it's still a better option, but just think about how useless Parasect was before, not only in this fight, but for all of the mid to late game in general. Parasect, my guy, you've come a long way. Okay, so the Blame fight doesn't go quite as well, but I decide to leave with Parasect to see what he can do. Growlithe's Fire Blast does a lot, but we do get him to sleep and take him out with a couple Dream Eaters, regaining some health in the process. But, his Ponyta is faster and finishes us off. Just kidding, Parasect, you god. What is already dead can never die. We take him out with a couple of Dream Eaters as well. Obviously we can't finish the fight, so I have to leave the rest of Vaporeon. But admit it, that's more than you thought Parasect would ever do against a Fire Gym. Again, it's nice not being quad weak to everything, we can actually pull our weight. After that, I decide to trek over to the power plant to catch my last team member. I figured I'd complete this set of trio Pokemon I've got going on with a Magneton. I figure we may want an electric type for Lorelei, so yeah, I guess we'll see if this thing pulls any weight in the late game. Time for the final gym battle against Giovanni. He's got a lot of rock types who can hit us super effectively, but I'm not too worried, since there's some of the few Pokemon we can actually outspeed. Not only that, but his whole team is either frail against special attacks, or weak to psychic. So Dream Eater actually packs a real punch, despite our special attack being mediocre. On top of that, we not only resist ground moves, but don't have to worry about Poison Point on Needle King and Needle Queen because of immunity. As a result, there's not much Giovanni can do to us. We whittle his whole team down slowly but surely. Our new typing has been incredible in the mid to late game. Resisting poison gets you extremely far in Kanto, on top of the immunities to normal and fighting. If an opponent can't hit us super effectively, there's really not much it can do. Parasect has become quite the wall. Time for the penultimate rival fight. I lead with our new friend Magneton against Pidgeot, who takes it out with a couple of sparks. This baits in Charizard, who absolutely cooks us with a flamethrower. I send in Vaporeon to deal with it with a couple surfs. Now that the two threats are out of the way, I feel like Parasect can handle the rest of his team. The Execute comes out, and I figure it's going to do something annoying while we switch, and sure enough it lands a Stun Spore on us, so we're paralyzed for the rest of this fight. But Parasect is an absolute warrior. 
we take out Execute with a single Shadow Punch, bringing in Rhyhorn. Since we're paralyzed, we don't outspeed it like we did for Giovanni's gym, so he lands a hard Rock Blast before we can put him to sleep. I take some health back with Dream Eater before finishing it off with a Shadow Punch. This brings in Gyarados, who gets off Intimidate, lowering our attack. The odds are against us, but he sets up Rain Dance while we put him to sleep. Again, Parasect continues to break through Paralysis, wearing him down with Shadow Punches. But on the last turn of Rain, he wakes up and hits a huge Rain Boosted Hydro Pump. Where is Dry Skin when you need it? But we do live and take him out with one last Shadow Punch. He's got one Pokemon left, Alakazam. Parasect, can you break through one more time? Of course he can. This Pokemon has absolutely no quit. I love that we can deal with entire teams without the need of setup moves like Calm Mind or Swords Dance. Let's hope the champion fight goes the same way. Here we are at the Pokemon League. As usual, Parasect is the only one I've leveled up to the level cap of 60. The rest of the team is two levels lower at 58. I forgot how high level the Pokemon League is in this game. I'm interested to see how we fare against Bruno and Agatha, but I feel like the rest of the league will be a challenge. I'm going to see how far Parasect can take us. Only one way to find out? Let's do this. First up is Lorelei, who is actually one of the hardest fights in this League 4. She uses some bulky Pokemon, so this is a War of Attrition. I put her Dugong to sleep and hit it with a mix of Shadow Punch and Dream Eater to keep it out of healing range. Next, we land a well-timed Pain Split on her Lapras who has a ton of HP, so it really helps. Again, we keep it just out of healing range and take it out with a Shadow Punch. Next is her Cloister, and to do any damage on this thing, we'll need to hit it with a special attack. Luckily, we're somewhat of a mixed attacker now, and we can take it out with two Dream Eaters. Her last two Pokemon are both Psychic types, so we can hit her Slowbro super effectively with two Shadow Punches, and take out her last Pokemon Jinx in a single hit. Gotta say, I thought I'd be missing Shadow Ball, but Shadow Punch has been doing the job just fine. We're starting to face Pokemon who can hit us pretty hard though, so let's see if we can keep it up. I have been looking forward to this Bruno fight. He leads with my favorite fighting type Pokemon, Onyx, who goes for Earthquake. We put it to sleep and take care of it with Dream Eater. He brings in Hitmonchan, and I was expecting Fire Punch or something, but he actually lands a critical hit Rock Tomb, dropping our speed. I heal some of it back with Pain Split. This is getting pretty dicey, so I put it to sleep and suck some health back with Dream Eater, and eventually get a couple good Shadow Punches off to take it out. In comes his Ace Machamp, who immediately scares me when it starts going for bulk up. This thing has Rock Tomb as well, so I have to imagine we're in KO range. We do get it to sleep, but it gets an early wake up. But it gets greedy and chooses to go for bulk up again, so I put it back to sleep, and keep it out of healing range before taking it out. Next is my second favorite fighting type, Onyx, who we can again put to sleep and regain our health with Dream Eater. Last is his Hitmonlee, and I didn't think this thing could touch us, but turns out he's actually got the tech with Foresight. Bruno read me like a book and goes for Mega Kick. Oh, he misses anyway. Classic Bruno. You know what? I'll give him credit. That was a lot tougher of a fight than I was expecting. Next is Agatha, who is an interesting one. She's got a lot of ghost types who can trade super effective blows with us, but her Pokemon will be faster, so this is actually pretty tough. She's got a lot of tricks up her sleeve too. Her lead Gengar goes for double team, but we laugh in her face as we one-shot her with Shadow Punch, which can't miss. Next is her Arbok, which drops our attack with Intimidate. We get lucky and dodge the Screech and put her to sleep, and hit a couple Dream Eaters before knocking it out. In comes another Gengar, who shows us the problem most Ghost types face before the physical special split. That attack probably kills us in Gen 4 onward, but not here. So we put it to sleep, and take our health back before taking it out. In comes Golbat, who hits a hard air cutter, but not hard enough. Again, we take it out with the Spore Dream Eater combo. Last is Haunter, who goes for Hypnosis, which we dodge, and one-shot it with one last Shadow Punch. We got pretty lucky in that fight, but come on, we had to show Agatha's ghost types why we're the top dog. Dream Eater might seem pretty busted at this point in the game, but it's only because her entire team is weak to Psychic. Now I'm not going to waste my time and yours trying to take out a bunch of dragons with Parasect. 
I decide to let my whole team have a go here, starting with Magneton against his Gyarados, who we take out with a spark. We even whittle down a Dragonair and a half before getting taken out. I decide to see if we can take out this Dragonair from half HP, and we can. Nice. But this baits in the Aerodactyl, who just takes us out with a critical hit wing attack. I'm really not sure if that crit mattered or not. But regardless, I just let Vaporeon take out the rest of the fight. I'm sure Parasect could have done more if we let him, but there are better Pokemon for the job, and we're running out of power points, so let's save our energy for the champion. Speaking of, time for the final battle against Blue. I lead with Magneton again to take out his Pidgeot with a couple sparks. I let him go down though to the Charizard's Fire Blast before sending out Vaporeon to deal with it with a couple surfs. Now that his two threats are out of the way, I turn to Parasect to clean up the fight. I decide to get a clean switch and let Vaporeon go down. Alright, we're in. But Executor is faster and puts us to sleep before we can beat him to the punch. He really can't do much to us though, since all he has is Giga Drain and Egg Bomb. Eventually, we wake up and give him a taste of his own medicine and knock him out with a couple of Shadow Punches. Next is Rhydon, who I was really scared of, but turns out we're faster and get him to sleep. Dream Eater and Shadow Punch don't do much though, so it takes a few hits. Eventually, he wakes up, but chooses not to go for Rock Tomb, but Scary Face and Earthquake instead. We take advantage of that and put him back to sleep before eventually taking him out. I'll use this as an opportunity to say that the Giga Dream TM, again, would have made a lot of these fights easier like Lorelei, Bruno, and this one, but again, it felt a little cheap. The grass type is behind us, and we're gonna prove that. Next is Gyarados, who drops our attack with Intimidate. This is bad, because he's got a lot more special defense than you'd think, so Dream Eater won't do much either. Again, he takes a lot of hits to take him down. He wakes up several times in the process, but elects to go for Dragon Rage instead of Hydro Pump, except for one time which we dodge. Eventually, we do wear him down, finishing him off with a clutch critical hit. His final Pokemon is Alakazam. We've got about 3 quarters of health left against the hardest hitting Pokemon in the game. Does Parasect have it left in him? Of course he does. We tank the Psychic, putting him to sleep, rendering him completely helpless, just how we like it while taking him out with one last stab, super effective Shadow Punch, winning us the battle, and the run. Out of all the videos I've done so far, this one was the most fun. This Pokemon was absolutely cracked in the mid game, and had just enough to finish through the late game. Our stats were starting to fall off, but we had the right tools to stay alive and take out the opponent in some very unorthodox ways. I'm really happy we got to make use out of Dream Eater, which is an extremely niche move that I hardly ever get to see used, but it was really strong. Even Fury Cutter was insane in the early game. I'm really glad I didn't teach us Leech Seed at the beginning, as that would have been too much. I think we were the perfect amount of powerful. The immunity ability seemed like overkill at times, but honestly I think Dry Skin in future generations is even more busted. Immunity was just extremely useful in Kanto in particular, but Gen 3 was still the perfect game to choose because I love how we used the pre-physical special split era to our advantage. This game could really use a physical ghost type, and we really cleaned house. I'm curious to see what you all think of this run. To some, the change to a ghost type may seem pretty drastic, but again, I'm not sure why we were a grass type in the first place. Turns out, Parasect is pretty strong when he's not weak to half the type chart. What changes would you make to Parasect? Are there any Pokemon you want to see next? Let me know in the comments. Next time, believe it or not, we're going to be taking a look at a Pokemon even weaker than Paris as we take a lap through the Hoenn region. Think you know who it is? Leave a guess down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.